Tyler Durden is a man with ideas that makes people scratch their heads while rustling up more than just a few feathers. One thing that he does that causes contention is dress how he wants to. Since the day he was burst on the silver screen, people have debated his style choices and 24 years later, many believe that he is far from an icon of any sorts, especially when it comes to fashion. But we have just as many people that believe the exact opposite, at least for his style choices. This begs the question, is Tyler Durden fashionable? And by the end of this video, I hope to answer this question. Fight Club, which was released October 15th, 1999, was directed by David Fincher, based off of the same titled novel written by Chuck Palahniuk. The film is about an insomnia-riddled 9-to-5-er played by Edward Norton that is pushed out of the multiple support groups he attends by fellow support group crasher Marla, played by Helena Bonham Carter. Edward Norton's character then crosses paths with soap salesman Tyler Durden, played by Brad Pitt, who is everything he wishes he was. Eventually, he finds himself living in Tyler's dilapidated house after his almost perfect apartment is blown up, and the two form a fight club for men who feel disenfranchised and disgruntled about the way their lives are but their friendship becomes tested once Marlo begins to put a wedge between the two. This is happening at the same time we see Tyler is evolving the club to something bigger than just fights. Now originally, Fight Club tanked at the box office, but with the help of DVD sales, it turned a huge corner and garnered the cult classic title for many. Eventually, people began to be drawn towards the movie and its pro-antagonist, Tyler Durden. The costume designer for this film is Michael Kaplan, who has worked on films such as the original Blade Runner, Miami Vice, and Seven. Now let's get into the costume design. Like I said before, Edward Norton's character is stuck in a cycle where he's going from city to city, back to his apartment with his perfect IKEA furniture, then back to his office. His clothes lack color, ingenuity, and flair, which reflects his mundane schedule, as well as serves as a symbol of his conformity to society and consumerism. We see him in a muted palette of whites, grays, beiges, and blacks. Throughout the entirety of this film, he's wearing awful-fitting polyester shirts, synthetic pants that make no statement, and zip-up jackets that do nothing but help him hide within the crowd. Besides an honorable mention of his watch looking decent, there's really nothing to take away from him other than the don'ts of how to dress yourself. If it weren't for Tyler's eccentric fashion, it would have been quite unbearable to sit through two hours with a painfully dressed main character. Kaplan even said that, if you looked at the two wardrobes next to each other, it wouldn't even even look like they were in the same film, and thank God for that. Now, before we talk about Tyler, I want to go over Marla. Marla's like Tyler in the sense that they get their clothes from thrift stores, but their styles couldn't be further from each other. Marla's style is what I believe grunge glam truly is. She sports a darker palette with the only colors in her wardrobe being this dark blue sequin dress, as well as this pale pink bridesmaid dress that she only got for a dollar. Other than those pieces, her wardrobe stays very dark, but not bleak. The most Marla and Tyler ever match is when we see Edward Norton's character confront her at one of the support groups, and she's wearing what looks to be a space print silk button-up with asteroids and stars on it, but of course, for her, it's black. Over the shirt is this knee-length notch collar jacket, which I believe to be a Rick Owens piece. In my research, I read a couple articles that said this was a Rick Owens jacket, but I'm not 100% on that. The collar is in this brown suede, and the rest of the jacket looks to be in like a black horse hair. It's pretty tailored and fitted at her chest and arms, which aligns with Rick jackets. If anybody can confirm this is a Rick jacket, please do so in the comments. Finally, on bottom, she's seen wearing a black skirt and some chunky leather heels with silver accents, which she's seen in throughout the film, as well as these black leather boots. Now the first time she meets Tyler, she's in that sequin dress that we talked about, and then she puts on a dark men's gray notched collar overcoat. I love how oversized the coat is for her, and I like how they gave Marla some gender bending pieces, something that we'll actually touch on later on in the video. Throughout the rest of the film, she's wearing silks, fur, and glitter encrusted fabrics with fits that range from sleek to slinky to oversized. One staple piece that she wears throughout the film is this all-consuming, black fur jacket that is a character in itself. What I love about Marla so much is that she has this eclectic style and is willing to wear an oversized jacket underneath a fitted tank and skirt. And then she'll wear a pink bridesmaid dress that's seen better days. By the way, she's one of the best thrifters. One dollar for the dress? No one can find better steals and deals than her. Speaking of steals, she most definitely stole that Rick jacket, if in fact it is a Rick jacket. Now, finally, the man, the myth, the figment of our imagination, Tyler Durden. Just like the film itself, there's a lot of divisiveness surrounding Tyler's aesthetic and style. Some say he's a style icon that's influenced men for over two decades so far and decades to come. Others say that just like his personality and philosophies, his wardrobe is toxic and problematic. 
So let's go through what his style is and what he wears throughout the movie. Tyler is supposed to be everything Edward Norton's character wishes he could be. He rejects late consumerism, which is why everything he owns is from a thrift store. On a side note, because of Tyler's philosophy, Michael decided to get a lot of the clothes from thrift stores, including the Gucci loafers he's seen throughout the film, which Michael got for $10 at a thrift store in LA. If it wasn't from a thrift store, it was a custom piece they had to make that was constructed and then deconstructed to look like it was old, worn, and from a charity shop. But we'll get into that more later. So in my opinion, Tyler's style is a blend of rock and roll meets 70s pornographic, meets androgynous, meets a homeless man. On top, his wardrobe consists of slim and tight-fitting printed tops that often have these random prints that at first don't seem all that fashionable like this pelican long sleeve button up, but eventually begins to win you over. His t-shirts range from fully printed tees like this light blue motocross fitted tee to this short sleeved crew neck that coincidentally says Sokka to me in this multicolored spiral font. Then there's the tank tops he wears, which is another source of his flair. A couple worth noting is, of course, the all-over print tank top that is made of these 70s sexploitation posters, and then, of course, his iconic mesh tank top, which is one of two mesh pieces that he's seen wearing in this movie. This is where I see some of the femininity and androgynousness in his style. I mean, mesh is pretty bold in these instances, even for today's standards. Now moving on to his bottoms, they are the complete opposite compared to his tops, with his slimmest pant being these flared Levi's that are all over printed in red and blue, with Levi's in white lettering written down the leg. The rest range from straight to wide leg pants and are all over the map style-wise. From oversized camo cargos to red straight leg trousers, Tyler refuses to be put in a box with his wardrobe, and he refuses to wear what people think is normal. Expanding on that, I noticed a key element, if you haven't picked up on it already, is Tyler wears peculiar items. Take these pants for instance. This pair of bluish gray slacks with a black stripe going down the side is actually a pair of mailman pants. Not many people would think of adding these into their wardrobe, nor would they know how to wear them and make it look natural, but Tyler does it with ease in my opinion. Now, I won't go any further without talking about the obvious. If you clicked on this video, it's most likely because you want to hear about Tyler's iconic red jacket. It's a red notched collar jacket that hits just below his hips. The notched collar gives a strong 70s feel with the longer pointed collar layered well with his button ups. A few other details I notice are the two front cargo pockets at the bottom, the western style back yoke, and possibly my favorite detail is the white contrast stitching that you see all over the jacket. Now you might want to see the brand or know where to get it, but I'm sorry to say there is no brand. This is a custom jacket that was made to fit Brad perfectly. Altogether, there were about six to eight multiples for the progression of the movie, as well as for stunt doubles. Michael said that the jacket was sewn, dyed to get that beautiful red color that was actually meant to resemble dried blood, and then it was intentionally broken down to make the jacket fit like a glove, as if Tyler had been wearing it for decades. I love this jacket, and I think if there was one piece to point at that propped Tyler up to be an icon, it would be this jacket. But that wasn't the only jacket that Tyler wore. He's also seen in two different leather racer jackets, that gave him a more modern look, but still looked great on him from the cut to the silver hardware to the seam detailing. Then there was this amazing checkered maroon suit jacket that he wears when he first meets Edward Norton's character. I loved how this jacket gave off a 70s punk aesthetic with its color and pattern, and I even loved the pattern pant that he pairs with it, plus the Gucci loafers. Tyler's so good at making clothes look cool. I even admire the way this white tuxedo jacket looked on him. Looking at this makes me want to buy one. Lastly, how can I not talk about the other iconic jacket of his, with that being his fur coat that is floor length, the orange mesh tank top with it, and the red trousers with those Gucci loafers again. This is an outfit that almost everyone is familiar with, even if you haven't seen the film. There's something feminine with the outfit while also being very masculine, probably due to Tyler's muscles. It's obviously daring and flamboyant, but not to the extreme. Well, okay. Maybe it's to an extreme, I just can't tell. It, it, it just looks so good. An item of clothing that Tyler wears, but not in public, is this lavender chenille robe from the brand Canyon Group. It has these pastel colored coffee mugs that are all over this lavender robe, and it's a very cozy look. It's an iconic piece and is actually pretty hard to come by, especially for a decent price. Now this is a piece that shows even when Tyler's not out, he likes to dress up. On feet, Tyler keeps it simple, only wearing a few pairs of shoes. He's seen mostly in the Hodgman boots in this brown and yellow colorway, the Gucci loafers that we talked about, and lastly, a pair of 
low top white and red converts. I think the variety was perfect and all over the map, just like the rest of his style. For accessories, you can see Tyler change sunglasses just about every scene. Most of them, if not all, are from Oliver People and Oakley's, and just about all of them have uh, a red tint to the glasses. Personally, my favorite pair has to be this pair of Oakley Mars leather sunglasses. The glasses look like if they made steampunk goggles cool, which I love personally. For jewelry, he only wears a handful of rings. He's often seen with this silver pinky ring that has this fat blue stone, an obnoxiously fat green emerald and silver ring, and then my favorite one, a holographic ring that has this eye winking at you depending on how you look at it. Now a few of my favorite looks from Tyler has to be the Levi's and Black Racer combo, the Red Racer jacket with his mailman pants that are rolled up with a pair of his Hodgman boots, Last and possibly my favorite is the white floral button up and his oversized camo cargos. I love this outfit, especially in these photos where his head is shaved. I think it's such a good look, the tight fitting short sleeve button up with those just ginormous cargos. It's such a juxtaposition and it looks so good. Also shout out to his flowing red pants that look beautiful on him. So there you have it. That is Tyler Durden's complete wardrobe and style. If Tyler really is a style icon, then he has to have influenced fashion or the culture. So let's take a look at his influence. Shortly after the release of the movie, Versace dubbed their men's fall 2000 collection Fight Club. It said that it had camo suits and low rise pants throughout the collection, but funny enough, I actually couldn't find any photos of this collection, but Versace isn't the only brand that used Fight Club for inspiration. There was also Jean-Paul Gaultier's 2010 fall collection with Everlast, but other than a few copied silhouettes like this racer jacket and red color jacket, there wasn't much of an influence. Most recently was Sindro's 2019 fall winter collection, where they took a lot of the aesthetic and pieces, not only from Tyler, but Edward Norton's character as well, and made it more historically masculine. They used camo, a similar color to the red jacket, and silhouettes similar to the iconic red jacket but made it more accessible to a less daring man, I think. Now this begs the question, if you leave Tyler's aesthetic as is, is it truly stylish? And is anybody dressing like him? One thing for certain is, if you want to dress like Tyler, you have to find oddball pieces, be bold with them, and wear clashing prints in strong colors. Take this outfit where he's wearing a red button-up with a navy puffer vest and nylon track pants. Nobody would really think to put these together, but there's something about it that looks right on him. Now, since style is subjective, to a certain degree, you can make an argument that Tyler is in fact fashionable. In my opinion, I think Tyler Durden is stylish, but I'm also not oblivious to the fact that Brad Pitt, and more importantly, Brad Pitt's body, helped him pull off these outfits and be able to get away with some of the choices he made. But it's not only the muscles that make Tyler look good in everything. His confidence and swagger helps him immensely. In order to look good in any outfit, you have to feel good in it, and Tyler is confident in just about everything he owns and wears, which makes him look that much better in everything. Michael Kaplan even said, I can't imagine any other actor at the time, or even now, being able to own the looks that I created and that we created together. He really was Tyler Durden. Personally, I wouldn't go as far to say that he's the only one able to do it. Look at Robert Pattinson in this GQ issue with spiked up blonde hair. I'm sure we could throw some clashing prints on him and he'd look just as great. Or if you want a normie, you could take a look at street style photographer watching New York's Instagram. There you'll be able to find some more daring people like Tyler. There are people who emulate Tyler in one way or another, either subconsciously or consciously. Just look at the writer of the novel, Chuck on Conan in 2003. This isn't an exact carbon copy of Tyler, but I can definitely see an influence and I think Tyler would maybe even take these pieces. In conclusion, I think Tyler is a stylish man wearing oversized flare pants that is definitely in right now, tight fitting tees and button ups that is also in right now, a 70s style that has been in for a while, in my opinion. But at the same time, I understand his muscles plus his confidence helped him pull off some of the looks he had. But there is no denying that a 70s style leather jacket in this distinct red color is a beautiful piece and layered well. Also to me, it's obvious that he's a style icon in certain regards, just based off the fact that there's been groups of people that have been in love with his style for over 20 years. I think it's hard to debate somebody's credibility when they've been going strong for so long. Like the rest of his style and philosophies, it isn't for everyone. But, at least for the style aspects, you have to respect it. That is going to be it for the video. If you made it this far, thank you. Like the video, share it with a friend. Comment if you think Tyler is stylish or if you think he just looks like trash. I would love to hear your guys' opinion. Also, I wanna hear what you guys wanna see next, so please let me know in the comments down below. Follow me on my social media. I'm on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. 
please also follow my Substack where I write fashion and costume design related posts. Thank you as always.